Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guest this week is Dr. Michael Pensina, Professor of Biostatistics and Bioinformatics, Director of AI Health, and Duke Health's first Chief Data Scientist. Dr. Pensina is an internationally renowned expert in the ethical and equitable use of data science and artificial intelligence. Today, we'll talk about the enormous potential these advanced technologies have to improve healthcare, and also about how to avoid the potential pitfalls they present. But before we talk to Dr. Pensina, I'd like to share a few updates. The season of respiratory illness is upon us, and in response to rising case numbers and the expectation of further seasonal increasing, masking is now strongly recommended in all clinical areas at Duke. Our infectious disease specialists expect a triple-demic this fall and winter, with COVID-19 and RSV on the rise, along with the annual influx of influenza. Cases of all three illnesses are expected to continue to increase as we move into the fall months. Wearing a mask is a simple and effective measure that can help diminish the transmission of all three viruses. As of September 15th, masking is now strongly recommended for patients, visitors, and staff in all areas of inpatient care units, including waiting rooms, hallways, and examination rooms. Masking is still required in locations with vulnerable patient populations, and it may be required in other areas in the event of respiratory illness clusters. This is the first respiratory virus season where vaccines are available for all three of the viruses responsible for most hospitalizations. Vaccinations remain the single most effective way to protect yourself. All faculty, staff, students, and volunteers in the School of Medicine and other units across Duke Health are required to have a flu vaccine or receive an approved exemption by November 7, 2023. All team members are strongly encouraged to be up to date with COVID vaccinations, including the updated COVID vaccine that was released earlier this week. The updated vaccine is based on the currently commonly circulating XBB 1.5 variant. An RSV vaccine is available for anyone age 60 or older. Team members in that age group should discuss RSV vaccination with their primary care providers. Next, I want to invite everyone to join us in celebrating and recognizing our Nobel laureate, Robert Lefkowitz's 50 years at Duke. A scientific symposium will be held in his honor on October 2nd and 3rd in Page Auditorium, and I'm inviting all of you to participate. We're calling it Celebrating Scientific Discoveries That Advance Human Health, and it will include scientific presentations by seven Nobel laureates and other eminent scientists. A special leadership session led by Dr. Sim Sitkin will feature Dr. Lefkowitz, President Price, Mike Krzyzewski, and myself. This exceptional event is free and open to all faculty, staff, trainees, and students. Registration and other information are available at the address on the screen. And now, please sit in my conversation with Dr. Michael Pensina. Michael, thanks so much for joining me today. We recently announced that you are Duke Health's first Chief Data Science Officer. Tell me what you think that will entail. Thank you so much for having me. Really happy to, to be here. I see the role of Chief Data Scientist as an important connection in this special time of the technological revolution where data and the methods to analyze it are entering all areas of our life and healthcare and health in particular. I really hope that this new role, which combines and connects our research and educational mission with our clinical mission, will be a bridge and further strengthening of how we think about applications of data science across the Duke portfolio. Well, the integration of research and patient care in this area is really, really important. So you've been involved in some of the research where you can really focus on the potential benefit of AI to patient care. Tell us about some of that. I think so, absolutely. And I like to say that the distinction between patient care and research is getting more and more blurred. I right. think it's one and the same thing. We need the rigor of research to really study how to deliver the best care, but we need practical settings where the questions come from. Research for the sake of research doesn't make sense today. And yes, the opportunities are huge. I think we have two revolutions going on right now. We have the data revolution with the electronic health records and all the other data sources. 
and we have the technological revolution related to AI. So combining these two, and they go hand in hand together, we can do really amazing thing. And that relates to basic science research, it relates to clinical care, and what's gaining more interest now in the dawn of generative AI is clinical operations making that better as well. For example, AI can be used to identify better treatments, better drugs, it's the discovery side, connected with the big data to provide opportunities for evaluation. I think one model is PCSK9 inhibitors, for example, and how they came For heart to disease. Be. Yes, yeah. exa exactly, for uh, uh, lipid lowering. Um, and the other example, we're kind of moving and seeing the opportunity in applications on the border of clinical and operational. And the potential is absolutely there, but if we don't do it correctly, if we don't make sure that it really serves humans, there is tremendous potential for misuse. One exciting project going on right now in Duke Health is better prediction of operating room use, right? Mm -hmm. How long surgeries last. If we can predict it better, we can schedule it better, use the operating rooms more efficiently, but at the same time get patients who need these necessary surgeries faster to receive the care that, uh, that they seek. So improve care and efficiency, which exactly. is kind of ideal. That, that's what we hope for. It's absolutely critical that it serves humans, right? Some people say human in the loop. Human in the loop is not enough. It's right. really service of humans. We, the people, meaning providers, clinicians, but also patients, have to have a voice. We need to decide which use cases we will be identifying for AI or any other technology to help us solve. So you've been positioning Duke to be a leader nationally in the safe and equitable use of AI. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I joke that we have the oldest AI governance in the country, and it's two years old. Right. Um, we, before the big generative AI revolution, we put together our algorithmic governance system in Duke Health with the leadership's commitment that no new algorithm will be applied to Duke patients until it goes through a thorough evaluation by the expert team we put together. And it's an example of a fantastic and successful partnership between the research side and the clinical side working hand in hand together. So we've put it, it's running, we have over 60 algorithms at different stages of development, but that's not enough. We need to go beyond because the needs is national or international. So we partner with our colleagues in the Mayo Clinic, Stanford and other organizations, broad in industry and all branches of government that work in the health domain to form the Coalition for Health AI which its purpose is exactly creating the guardrails and best practices for trustworthy AI. I will say um, today the added challenge is the generative AI with the access, which is very wide and broad, which creates added challenges that we're trying to address now. Everybody's kind of experimenting with it. Yes, yes, and it, it's very exciting. Everybody wants to do something, but again, if we don't do it in a principled way with patient, Num as number one, there, are, there is potential for misuse. Well, Michael, I'm so glad you're leading this locally and nationally. So thanks so much. And thanks to everybody for all that you do. Have a great weekend.